Hi there and welcome. Today we look at a machine learning example in R using Max Kuhn's caret package. And we'll compare a gradient boosting machine to a random forest model. The data we're using is called Boston. It's in the mass package in R and we're modeling the median value of owner-occupied homes. I'll call it home prices in short. We have 13 predictors in the data set. We don't need to look at all of them in detail. I just mentioned two here in the middle. In bold, the average number of rooms per dwelling, called Rm, and at the bottom, the lowest status of, of the population in percent, called Lstat. But the models will use all predictors. We start simple with a decision tree. We see that the total average is 23,000 US dollars. And the strongest predictor for the first split is the rooms per dwelling. And then as we go to the left, we have lower median values of unoccupied homes, 20,000 here in node two. And then if we look at the share of lower status population, uh, we can get the lowest value of 15,000 US dollars. Um, per home in suburbs of Boston. And the highest numbers are to the right. The second split here is also done by rooms per dwelling. So if we have 7.4 or more, then we get a median value of 45,000 on average. Now you can imagine that using a single decision tree to make predictions would not be very accurate. This is not a very fine-tuned model. So to get better predictions, we have to look at different methods, and one way is to combine a lot of trees. And how do we make predictions? We use cross-validation in order to avoid overfitting. Here we use five-fold cross-validation, so we split the data into five partitions, use four of them to train the model, and the fifth one is um, the test partition on which we evaluate model performance. And we repeat this five times so that each partition um, serves as test data once. And then this whole process can repeat it again to get different um, divisions to have more stable results. Now we dive into Caret. Caret is a great package for machine learning in R. One reason is that it makes cross-validation very easy. Here in the top line we define a train control object and we just say that we want repeated cross-validation, five-fold cross-validation with um, three repetitions. And the second reason why Caret is such a great package is that it gives a common interface to a lot of machine learning algorithms. Um, here we use the train function and you see that we can train an R part model for a single decision tree as well as a random forest model here at the bottom. And we use the same syntax. So we don't have to remember different syntaxes for different machine learning algorithms. Um, what is a random forest? We combine a lot of trees. Um, each tree is fit on a random sample of the data um, generated by bootstrapping. And the trick in random forests is that for each tree, we do not use all the predictors to make splits, but only a random subset of predictors. This may sound crazy, but it works very well in practice because it decorrelates the trees. So the trees are less similar and are better able to compensate each other's weaknesses. So we get pre better predictions overall. So now we want to see how the random forest model compares to the single decision tree. And of course we use cross-validation and Caret makes this very easy. It provides us with a resamples function. So we just pass it a list with the models it's two in this case, um, and then we get a summary of this resamples object. And here I just chose to display the root mean squared error, which is interpretable in units of the dependent variable. So the average prediction error of the single decision tree is $5,680 per home. And the random forest has a lower root mean squared error of only 3.20 or $3,200. So of course the random forest um, gives more accurate predictions. So now we 
where challenge or colleague has created the random forest model and says, um, I don't think that you can beat this model and we accept the challenge and choose to create a gradient boosting machine. What is a gradient boosting machine? Here we also combine a number of trees, but the difference to um, the random forest model is that <clears throat> we incrementally improve the model in that we weight those cases that were predicted badly before, we give them a higher weight so that the next tree <clears throat> especially tackles these cases. So it's an incremental method. And the motto is we want to turn a weak learner into a strong learner by boosting. Um, here at the top I give the R code again with the caret function train, so it's very simple. It just additionally specify the Gaussian distribution here and verbose equals false prevents output from displaying a lot of details that we don't need here. We look at this tree model and compare it to the random forest model and um, this is a disappointment because the GBM has a higher root mean squared error. So our colleague smiles and we have lost the competition at this stage but I wouldn't have made the video if there was nothing we could do about that. So what can we do? We have a closer look at which parameters are used for this gradient boosting machine. And here I can use the getModelInfo function, um, specify the GBM and make R display the parameters. And we see that there are four parameters here. The number of boosting iterations or n trees, the max tree depth or interaction depth, and shrinkage um, relates to how fast the learning curve is, so it, re it relates to the waiting process, and then the minimum terminal node size. And now we check the output that Caret gave us in training our GBM model. And here at the bottom we see that two of the four parameters were held constant. The shrinkage parameter was held constant at 0 0.1, and the number of uh, the minimal number of observations per node was held constant at 10 and only the two other parameters interaction depth and number of trees um, were varied in the tuning process. Caret tried um, tree depths of 1, 2 and 3 and number of trees 50, 100 and 150 and the best model here is in the last line uh, with um, three, three splits per tree and 150 trees in total, and this gives us the root mean squared error that we saw of 3.30 if we round it. So what can we do? We can try to fine-tune these parameters a bit more and see if we can optimize the model. And how do we do this? Um, here I specify a grid. Expand grid is a function from base R, and it just gives me a matrix with all combinations of these parameters. And here I specified four or five parameters for each one. So it makes 400 models in total if we use all combinations. So this is the matrix my grid. And I pass this matrix to the tune grid parameter in the train function. And then this is the reason why I use a presentation and not a live R demonstration because this takes several minutes to compute. It's 400 models and then we do cross-validation for each model, so it's a lot of calculation going on here. And now we can look at the result. First the result is just which parameters turn out best. So the number of trees was increased compared to Caret's first try with the defaults. We have now 225 trees instead of 150. Also interaction depth or well, the number of splits per tree is increased to 7. The shrinkage parameter was changed from 0 0.1 to 0 0.075, and only minimal terminal node size remains at 10. So now we're really keen to see how the new model with these parameters will perform compared to the random forest model that our colleague created. So we use a grid again, but this time we only use the best tune. So it's only one model that will be fit. So this train function will run quite fast. It doesn't have to compare a lot of models anymore. We have done that already. <clears throat> and we use the resamples function again for the cross-validation. And 
to compare the four models that we have now, the single decision tree, the random forest model that our colleague thinks will win, and then the gradient boosting machine with Carrot's default values and our user-specified GBM model. Summary gives us a numeric um, result and we also display a graphical result and here I chose the dot plot. There were others um, like a box and whisker plot. We start with a graphical representation. Models are sorted by model performance so that we see the single decision tree is far off. The other three models are quite close and indeed our user-defined gradient boosting machine wins this competition even if it's only a very small margin and you see that um, standard errors overlap so it will not um, pass a significance test. Our model is only marginally better than the random forest model but it is a little better and so we win the competition. And here finally we look at the actual numbers. So the root mean squared error of our gradient boosting machine came down to 3.14 from 3.30 and it has now overtaken the random forest model. So to sum up, we can say that firstly it's well worth digging into Caret because it makes machine learning in R so much easier with respect to um, cross-validation and also by giving a common interface to a lot of machine um, learning algorithms and it has a lot of other useful functions as well. And secondly, the defaults for model tuning are quite good in Caret, but if we have time and want to optimize a model, we can tune the parameters a bit more and get a better result. And this was here necessary to win the competition. Thank you and good luck for all your machine learning projects.